Hi everyone, I'm Vinod and welcome to Career Bolt. In today's conversation, we're going to talk about a bunch of things. I'm going to talk about how I, I ended up getting a full score in the GRE exam. I'll also talk about some of the learning pathways I had adopted to get a good score. And I'll also talk about some free learning resources for you if you watch till the end of this video. So with this, I'm going to jump straight in. So if you look at what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about how do you prep for the verbal, quantitative and analytical section. And I'll talk about my strategy in terms of getting a full score. And the way I got a full score in the GRE was that this was my third attempt in 2018. I wanted to apply for PhD programs in marketing and consumer behavior. So that's what made me write the GRE. And I'll talk about what I did to get a good score. But I'll also borrow upon lessons I learned from my first attempt in the GRE. And I always gotten above uh, 95th percentile in verbal and quant um, in all my attempts. And I'm going to share some of the tips in terms of how to make that happen. Again, if you watch the end of the video, um, I'll show you exact links by which you can actually end up getting free resources for all the material I've listed out here. Okay, so jumping into things. First and foremost, GRE is no longer required by universities. Most universities are saying that the GREs are either optional or they're saying that it's not necessary. So if you're applying to a university where GRE is optional, I would strongly recommend that you do give the GRE because they've not waived the GRE. If somebody else gives the GREs and gets a good score, they'll definitely get preference over you if you're not submitted your GRE. So unless you are the, the best applicant out there and if the GRE scores are optional, please do give your GRE. And when you're looking at the GRE preparation, the way you need to look at it is there's probably three months of solid preparation where you have to be completely involved and spend as much time as possible for the GRE. But at the same time, you also need to spend a lot of tra time training for it well in advance. So you should not wait till three months before you give your GRE exam to begin your preparation. You should begin your preparation way ahead. So if you're, for example, planning to give your GRE um, you should do it in your third year of your undergrad program or your first year of the master's program so that you have enough time in your uh, final year to focus on things which matter like statement of purpose, letters of recommendation, identifying universities, identifying research labs, identifying professors and so on. So the first and foremost, the most important part of prepping for the GRE, especially if you want to get a really good score in the verbal section is that you have to read this Barron's word list in detail. And when I say Barron's word list, I'm talking about approximately 3,000 words, 3,500 words. Please read these words in detail. You should memorize these words as much as possible. And it takes time. It takes a lot of effort. Like if you're reading, like each word list is around uh, 100 words. And you're going to be going through around, um, uh, it ranges from 70 to 100 words. And you're going to be reading around 50 word lists, which brings it around 3,500 words. The advantage of reading the word list is that it'll help you throughout your career. So whether you are going to grad school, if you're going to the workplace, a lot of these words will be used in the US workplaces. And you have to know what that means. Most of the US students actually end up practicing these word lists during the time they do their SAT, the SAT exam, when they enter the undergraduate program. So they actually have to learn these word lists way before uh, the graduate program. And Indians are starting off late, but this word list is very, very important in terms of brushing up your English, helping you understand the language being used in universities and in the workplaces, also giving you a greater command of the language. So the word list is probably the most critical and most important if you want to get a great score in verbal. I can talk about my personal experiences where I feel that you can answer almost every question in verbal, but if you don't know the meaning of a certain word, you are going to miss out on the top five or top 10 percentile. In terms of you'll not be able to crack the verbal exam unless you master the word list. So the way it has to work is that if you read the word list completely, if you just pick a word at random, you should be able to understand the context of the word, um, where it's being used, and you should be able to relate the word with something at the back of your brain. So that's the word list. I think when it comes to the quantitative preparation for math, it's going to be very easy for most folks, especially if they have an engineering background, because the content being tested for the GRE quantitative section, the math section is pretty much like 11th and 12th grade math, 
what you're going to do in your CBSC. And um, there will be probably a little bit of um, more detailed questions in probability permutations and combi combinations and so on. And if you were prepped for your IIT entrance exams, this will easily help. So even when I gave my GRE, I was borrowing up our lessons um, done many, many years back when I was prepping for my entrance exams. So that will help you throughout your life. So this means that, for example, if you still remember your concepts from your 12th grade and your JE prep. So even if you give your GRE math exam 10 years later, 20 years later, 30 years later, the knowledge you gain will always help you when during a GRE prep. The analytical section is actually um, more straightforward in terms of um, you have to read the ETS. There is a formal official guide to the GRE by ETS, Educational Testing Service. They are the people who take care of the GRE exam. And they clearly say what is it they're looking for when it comes to analytical section in terms of what scores is given to what sort of write-ups and the reason why they give those scores. So do brush up on what the essays are in terms of uh, what are the expectations from the graders. And also most of the questions which will be asked during the, anal the, the writing section, the analytical section is where there's a list of essays and the essays are pretty much going to be repeated. So you can actually predict the essays in advance. So do look at all these essays and see if there is some blind spots. If you're not able to answer any specific essay, then do some preparation for it well in advance. That can help you get a good score in the writing section. Typically, most professors don't take the writing section very seriously. They always look at the verbal and the quantitative section in a, with more of a lens. So the analytical section, the writing section doesn't matter, but verbal quantitative section does matter. Also, analytical section is interesting because sometimes they ask you to critique an argument and some, they'll ask you to pick holes in arguments. And I think it's good for logical reasoning, even outside the GRE, when it comes to your day-to-day -day life, it'll teach you to be more critical and not just accept something because that's being fed to you. You probably ask the right questions and you have a lot of examples in the ETS official guide in terms of how to think more critically. So that's something which is always going to help you. So before you get into the crunch period, the three months before you actually end up giving your exams, also try to do a bunch of things. Read the ETS official guide to the GRE line by line. Try to answer every question which is out there. So it's going to help you out, get a feel of what the GRE exam is, especially the verbal and quantitative sections. Also strongly recommend something called the big book. Not many people heard about this, but well before the GRE test went online, there was something called a big book. This was published in somewhere near uh, 1995. So 27 tests of the GRE where you get a feel of what the verbal questions are, what the math questions are. So that's really the big book. There are 27 tests. I try to practice as many of these tests as possible. The more you practice, the better score you're going to get in the actual GRE exam. So the link is something which um, um, I will talk about at the end of this uh, discussion. But do practice a big book, take the 27 tests and practice it for as soon as you finish your word list, right? Begin to work on the big book tests and keep practicing it. The more you practice, the more comfortable you are going to be with the exam. The only problem is that in 1995, there was definitely the verbal and quant section is very similar to what's out there right now, but they also had a separate analytical section. And the anal analytical section is pretty much like involved a lot of logical reasoning, which doesn't exist anymore. It's become basically the writing section right now is a combination of both analytical and writing. But uh, if you're looking at the verbal and quantitative sections, there's a lot of similarity between 1995 and what's happening right now. Well, let's talk about the crunch period. Three months before the exam, I would say that to practice, there's a bunch of guides out there, Peterson's guide, Kaplan, Princeton guides. And I'll talk about the links later, but to practice this as much as possible. Kaplan typically tends to be very difficult. It's probably the toughest um, guide in terms of prepping for the GRE. But then if you practice Kaplan, you will get a good sense of um, how, how to do well in the GRE exam because actual difficulty content in the GRE is going to be much lesser than Kaplan. So Peterson's Princeton's are much simpler. And uh, I sometimes feel that the, the difficulty level is actually way simpler than even what the actual GRE exams are. Princeton, there are some tests which are very difficult. Some are less difficult. But Peterson's is way more easier than the actual GRE. Kaplan is way more difficult than the actual GRE. 
Likewise, if um, you have done with Peterson's Kaplan Princeton guides, and if you're taking the mock tests, then you should move on to Barron's and Princeton review. So again, the Princeton review, uh, they have a bunch of tests out there, which I think is very important because um, it tends to be pretty similar to the actual test you get at the end of the day in terms of the actual GRE test. But the Barron's guide, I and the, their tests, I felt was very, very similar to what the actual GRE test was. It looks pretty pretty simple, but if you have done your homework, then actually the actual GRE is actually not that difficult. I think Barron's and Princeton review tests are very good indicators that of giving you adequate preparation for the actual online tests. Note that just doing the big book is not enough because big book will give you more of a paper-based test and uh, it's very different doing it on paper because you can always go back and answer questions you missed but when you're doing it online you have to you don't have too much time to go back and do things so you pretty much have to make an assumption make the best possible guess mark it and then move on you may not have too much time to come back in the end so online there's also different issues like you're going to be in a climate control environment uh, if it's too cold then you may need a, a woolen jacket and if it's too hard, you may need to ask uh, the person invigilator to increase the AC and so on. So temperature matters a lot. So there's a lot of crazy things which can go wrong in interview center. So this is the difference between paper-based tests and online tests is that in online tests, there's a lot of additional things to consider. You're kind of cooped up in one place. You're standing in, sitting in front of a laptop for hours. It can be pretty tiring. So even if you prepared a lot, if you're not comfortable with the test environment, you could do badly in the GRE. So I always recommend that people take the GRE more than once if they're not gotten a good score. Because um, by rewriting the GRE, many people tend to do very well. Because the first time is always a little messy, but the more you write the GRE, the better it becomes. The last month I would say is that do practice your weak spots. Make sure that you, for example, when it comes to quant, make a list of formulas and the questions where you made mistakes, make a list of it and make sure that you capture the learning in the notebook you have for yourselves. Likewise, when it comes to the, the verbal section, there may be some common mistakes you regularly make. Make a note of it and make sure that you write down your strategy in terms of how do you solve those problems. Because the day before your GRE exam, you will not have time to review all these things. So you're just going to look at notes. You're also going to look at how is it you're going to prevent some common mistakes from happening once again. Kaplan tests and power prep tests, I think, are really good because um, Kaplan is way more difficult than the actual tests. And power prep tests, this power prep test comes bundled along with the GRE, um, the, the book you get, the online material you get. So power prep tests is basically the same software which administers the actual GRE exam. So you're actual scores in the power prep is going to be very, very similar to the scores you get in the GRE. So you might actually get a score which is like plus or minus 10 points in terms of that's how accurate the power prep tests are. So I would say that practice your power, power prep tests right in the end after you've done every other possible preparation. And I think they have two tests. Make sure that you do these two tests like one month before your GRE and maybe 15 days before your GRE so that you have a sense of where you made mistakes and what you can improve. There should be enough time for you to also improve if there is a gap. So power prep tests uh, is probably the biggest indicator of your actual GRE scores. And if you've done all the preparation I mentioned above, you should be able to get a good score in power prep. So I'm going to paste a link to my Medium blog where I've actually talked about free resources for each one of the material I've listed out here. So do go to my Medium blog, which is listed in the description, and check for free reading material. Um, even though it's free, if you can pay for it, I strongly recommend that you pay and get the books. But if you cannot afford it, then maybe you can check up the free material. So do check it up. And do let me know if you have further questions about how you can do well in the GRE. Hopefully, I was able to answer some of the questions you had at the back of your mind. But if not, let me know in the comments below. And if you thought this video was useful, please click the like button and also subscribe to my channel if you're not done it because that helps me improve my reach. And Google Analytics will also spread it to more and more folks as more of you subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone. Have a really good day. I had a pleasure talking to you. Cheers.